Matt, what what's going on? What happened with uh, what's going on with AMD? Oh man, they are on a roll, aren't they? I mean, can you slow these guys down? <laughs> I don't know, but there are companies in AI that uh, it seem to be uh, going a little bit uh, quicker. But I don't want to take any credit away from uh, what they're doing on the server side. You know? Yeah, let me go on the let me go on the server side. They are on the server side. They're certainly on a roll. So. Um, you know, they released their Genoa product back, uh, I guess it was about uh, three months ago, uh, 96 core part, um, fantastic uh, performance numbers, great adoption out in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, this, this past Tuesday, uh, they had their data center and AI day where they announced the availability of uh, Bergamo, which is, you know, I like to think of it as an ARM compete, 128 cores. Um, they pulled down the core size, I think, uh, 35%, so they shrunk it quite a bit, still on a 5 nanometer, um, still with a lot of memory, PCIe 5. Didn't defeature the platform at all, but added a whole bunch of cores. Um, and, you know, you wonder, like, where is this thing going, right? What are they doing? Because, you know, they're in the x86 space. Well, here's the story, right? ARM is, has made a, a lot of play in the, in the cloud space, right? Uh, we've got Graviton at AWS. Ampere is in every other major cloud provider right now uh, in the U.S. and elsewhere. And uh, they're, they're, it's definitely a threat um, that both AMD and Intel are seeing. So this was AMD's, I believe this is AMD's response. Um, great story. I actually, you know, this to me is more about AMD's posture than it is about a product, right? In years past or in the few years past, AMD would have kind of like, I don't know that they would have really responded to this threat, but they become very aggressive in understanding where their plays are and being protective against those plays. Um, so while the technology is great, uh, while I believe this is going to land well inside of the uh, inside of the cloud data center, I'm more impressed with the approach that AMD has taken to the market. Um, that's part one. Part two is Genoa X, or as I like to call it, Gen X, because that sounds cool because I'm a Gen Xer. Uh, the forgotten. We the all forgotten are. People. Yeah. 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 The latchkey kids. Yeah. That's all right, but I'm not bitter about it. Um, but Genoa X has a build on what they introduced with Milan X, which is their uh, 3D V cache, right? Stacking cache um, up on top of the chip instead of taking up more real estate. Does two things, allows you to pack more cache inside of a, a package size, but also increases performance. Uh, the way the cache is layered, the substrates they use and the distance uh, makes it better performing. So with Genoa, I think their L3 cache gets up to, it's over a gig worth of L3 cache. So your, your technical performance, um, you know, fluid dynamic kind of um, workloads are going to perform very well on this. Um, so this, to me, this kind of further separates them and continues to build that differentiation on the, the high performance side. Those are the two big things. I know you did a lot, Pat, on the... Uh, on the AI on the AI side, I didn't know if you wanted to hit on that at all. Or... Yeah, I do. I uh, well, first off, you know, it's it's kind of a AMD was in a tough position where here they had all this epic goodness, right? They were doing uh, Victory Lap on you know the first element of fourth gen, yeah. and then they were bringing out the Vcache version for HPC mm -hmm. uh, and the many core version to really compete <laughs> with uh, with Ampere. Right, uh, where I think the the cores are, uh, sorry, the 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 cores are forty percent smaller, yeah. and that includes cash. And there's got to be something else if you're going to reduce it. Uh, if you're going to reduce it that quickly, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I view this as the beginning of of AMD's data center AI push. And I knew you were going to cover the epic side, so I covered the AI uh, the mm -hmm. AI piece. Um, but I think it was a good first showing. And I think net net, I do believe that the company is committed to competing with both uh, Nvidia uh, and and Intel. And I think the the GPU goodness of it, because large you know uh, the models and the frameworks are all over the place, yeah. gives GPUs an advantage. GPUs yeah. are not the most efficient and low power. Uh, in fact, ASICs are, and that's where a lot of the upstarts are putting their investments uh, in there. But but I do believe that uh, AMD is is going to get traction. They've been working on Rockham, I think, for close to a decade. 
That's right. Uh, I cited a white paper that we published seven years ago on yeah. Rockham, the <laughs> software stack, yeah. which, by the way, uh, you know, competes with uh, uh, NVIDIA's uh, CUDA. Yeah. Uh, but I'm convinced more than ever, uh, partially because the hyperscalers don't, they, they need uh, some hegemony in supply chain. Yeah. And they don't want to have uh, one. They don't want to have one option uh, out there uh, to go through. So they're kind of left with, "Hey, do I keep single sourcing mm -hmm. from Nvidia? Uh, do I create my own accelerators like Inferentia, Tranium, yeah. and what Meta just uh, cranked out? Which, by the way, are ASICs, not GPUs, so they're not as flexible. <clears throat> or do I lean into an AMD or an Intel? Well, I think they're going to do all three." at the same yeah. time, right? Yeah. So if you're meta and you're doing, you got a big recommendation engine, it makes sense to build an ASIC to just do that. Uh, but you're still gonna need GPUs, I'm convinced, for the next five years. Yeah, and you know, Pat, one, one of the things I really like about what they've done, and you know, it, it's it's easy to get caught up in the moment of what NVIDIA is doing and the, you know, and, and kind of the, the play they have. But when you look at the kind of, at a at a higher level, right? And it's all about data, moving data, processing data, transforming data. You've got Epic, you've got uh, the GPU lineup, you've got what they bought with Xilinx, you've got what uh, you know with Xilinx, what you, you got what they bought with Pensando. Yeah, and they have all of the pieces right brought together for the movement, for the processing, for the transformation, um, and for the crunching of of data. I, I think they're really well positioned. It's going to take time for all these pieces to come together more cohesively, but it's yeah. they're all there, and I, I trust what Lisa's doing in Forest and, and team. You know, I'll, I'll add a little bit on on the Pensando. So I was pre-briefed um, ahead of their announcement on their next generation DPU, and I continue to be really impressed. So it's been about a year since AMD acquired Pensando, and um, their initial design win was with Aruba, who um, I spent a lot of time with as well. But I continue to be um, very impressed with how they're really driving the performance and the power envelope, and also the fact that they've developed a full software stack to support their PU, unlike you know Marvell as an example. So um, you know again, you know uh, that was such a great acquisition for AMD, and you know Matt, to your point, really sort of rounds out what they're doing in the data center. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, listen, uh, Nvidia worked on CUDA for twelve years. Uh, plus, uh, when I was at AMD, yeah. uh, but I think you know uh, nobody wants to have one vendor uh, making seventy points, not just on chips, right. uh, but on cards, and oh, by the way, on servers. Yeah, and system, yeah. on that's servers. Right. That's right. right? Uh, nobody, and that's exactly what uh, DGX can. And by the way, if you believe what Lisa Sue said, which says the market's thirty billion now moving to 150 billion in four years, uh, even if uh, 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 AMD gets 20% or 10% of that market share, That's NVIDIA is still gonna fly, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So it's not just a, you know, uh, winner, winner take all. And anybody who thinks it's winner take all is just a fool, uh, doesn't have the experience that, uh, that they need.